guys, well, welcome. We want to say thank you so much to Sarah Spiritual for having us and to the Expedito Center. Thank you so much for having us. I'm so excited. You finally did it. I know. I've been wanting to be here for a long time because I love Sarah. Even before I knew her, I loved her. I did. I've been to the center before I ever met Sarah. And I think it's a wonderful center. And I just totally honor you for your work and your service. And I know, I like I said before about her name, but just you as a person, we forget the name. I know you're the real deal sincere. So. Very yes. Uh, you're in good company. We're in company. You're in good company. Yeah. All right. So welcome, you guys, again. And I want to say also to set your intention right now in your mind that what you're meant to receive, which is for your best, your highest and best, and the animals in your life, that you'll receive either in this now moment while we're here during this time. So we have about two hours. That doesn't give me like hours of a weekend, but that you'll receive it either now in this moment or even afterwards, that somehow by being in vibrational frequency together, that somehow that vibrational consciousness will come into your consciousness and you'll align with it, yeah? Because all of consciousness just exists as vibrational energy that we can access, vibrational information. So, okay, so let me just, for the people who are brand new to me, let me just say a couple things that pulled into my whole history. My name is Borean Spagna. And I've been practicing animal communication for over 20 years. And that's kind of where I got my start, actually, as an animal communicator, in a way. Because just briefly, my story, short version of my story, is that my, I was working in corporate America for the first 20 years out of college. And then my brother died of an unexpected drug overdose. And when he passed away, I started getting very real direct contact from him, from the non-physical realm. Basically like, wake up, you're next if you don't change your trajectory, change your life. And I took the message, you know, I listened and I ended up becoming a dog trainer. I was hired by a guy who spent 20 years training service animals for the United States government. When he left his work in the military, he started a dog training business and he recruited me and six or seven other people to work with him. And I got trained by him for a whole year. And he would videotape us and critique us. And while that was happening, you know, I had to go into automatic pilot to be perfect. That's what he wanted. You can't think. You have to know without thinking. So I got really good at it. My mind would go blank. And then I'd hear the dogs telling me, I'm going to train you. I'm going to teach you. <laughs> and that's what happened. They started teaching me. So that's really where my animal communication started. And then just from there, it blossomed. I became a healer, I started as, I got, a, uh, I became a Reiki master, and then I got involved in all kinds of healing modalities, like the Akashic Records, anyone know that? Most of you guys probably do. And I'm an Akashic Records teacher, and I do healing with the records, and also I do um, theta healing, anyone familiar with that modality? Yeah, and just all kinds of, I mean, I can't even, you know, make a record of all the different modalities I've been trained in over the years. I just love I love all things spiritual, metaphysical. I love, love, love working with the non-physical realm and consciousness to expand consciousness for us here because I feel like that is the answer and solution to everything. So, but anyhow, that's how I started. My the animals would talk to me, and it really, it was born out of my own sincere desire. And this was so sincere and so true. I wanted to be of service to animals on a global scale, and that was my mantra for like 20 years in college. Not in, after college, in corporate America. I just and I and I didn't like lies. I always was like, I want the truth. I always want the truth. I don't I don't like these lower vibrational un, sort of truths, half truths. I like the highest, clearest, purest truth I can access. And that's how I. That's where it all came from. That sincere desire. So the animals started teaching me. Then I got trained in all these modalities. And then now I'm a channel and a healer and an intuitive and I call myself an ascension guide. So. Anyway, that's my story for those of you who don't know me, in a nutshell. There's a lot more to it than that, but it's enough for now. So let's talk about animal communication. Okay, let me ask this. Who in this room, I know some of us are, actually practicing in some way, shape, or form animal communication? Okay, so then the others of you, is that your most desire to learn animal communication, or is it most your desire to understand your own animals better? Give me a sense of what you're mostly wanting. Animals better. Animals you want to you want to learn your own animals better. Is there anyone in here who really wants to learn more about how to do animal communication? Because we got to Okay. 
All right, so we'll, we're going to try to do our best to fit this all in. So let's first understand how animal communication works. It's very simple. It's actually really simple. Humans are operating primarily from an, a, a beta brainwave. When you're listening to me right now, you're in a beta brainwave. When you sleep, you're in a delta brainwave. When you meditate, if it's a light, peaceful, enjoyable meditation or somewhere where you're visioning, that's an alpha brainwave. Even if you're sitting in front of the TV, chilling, that's an alpha brainwave. That's a very suggestible brainwave. Extremely important to be careful what you're listening to when you're watching TV because even if you don't think you're meditating, if you're in the zone and that TV is telling you to be afraid, or pay attention to gun control from some private agenda, or do you need to see your doctor, that alpha brainwave will come into your brain, you'll attune to it, and your consciousness will take that information and deposit it into your field of energy, which includes your body. Make sense? Yes. The animals don't communicate at the frequency. They do communicate on an alpha brainwave, which is how most animal communicators do it. Which is also, to me, much less effective, because they just go into a little bit of a meditation, and then they sort of allow that kind of, this sort of fuzzy brain wave. It's a little bit fuzzy, it's not as clear. But the way they're really communicating primarily, the clearest dialogue as far as I can understand is through a theta brain wave frequency, which is a very high level frequency, but it's also not hazy, so it's straight dialogue. And now we can practice telepathic, telepathic communication, we can do it, but animals are already, that's how they communicate. It's only one way that they communicate, but that's telepathy. Brain to brain is telepathy. So when we learn how to access that frequency, which we learn through certain meditation, and we can hold that frequency without falling asleep or without dropping into an alpha brain wave, which a lot of people do. They don't know how to hold it because it's a challenge. You have to work at it. That's where brain to brain two-way dialogue happens. And by the way, that is also how we can easily access angels, and non-physical beings, loved ones, it's a frequency, a vibrational frequency that our brains are able to access. Make sense? Okay. There's other ways animals communicate. They may also send sensory information, which we can receive even through our skin, or we can receive through our, the, our intelligence of our heart. So magnetic information, because the heart is a magnetic center, right? So when we learn how to access our heart, which is something that you know, most humans aren't doing that. It's not that we're not loving people. We just haven't really learned how to live. We're learning. We are learning. How to really live from that heart and develop the brain matter that's in our heart. We have brain in there, but we have to develop it and build it just like a child might have to build their own brain matter, right? So they might send magnetic or some other, it's a frequency that, that's magnetizing, but it's an energetic uh, piece of information that can come heart to heart. You can go brain to heart, heart to brain, but we have to have this open, right? The other key thing to understand about how it works is what a spiritualist call this. Third eye. Third eye. Yeah, okay, what is the third eye in actuality? Intuition. It's intuition, but here's what it is. It's your pineal gland and your pituitary gland. Now these are stored right over here, really, in the back, in the center, of the brain. And these two master glands that are housed in what's called the cave of Brahman. This is a real, in the brain there's like a, a cave, and these glands sit in there, master glands, pituitary gland, pineal gland, and those are actually the glands that you see with. They're what allow you to see. It's not your eyes that see. Your eyes are filters. It's not your ears that hear. Those are filters. Those are tunnels, canals for sound and vibration. It's the brain that sees and hears. So the pineal gland and the pituitary gland, AKA the third eye, that needs to be really developed and really um, opened. What happens for most humans, I'm just looking at this guy, it's out here. No, that's not, but it's okay. So what happens for most humans is it gets calcified. How does it get calcified? Fluoride. Fluoride in the water. What else? What's that? Coffee, sugar. It's not so much coffee. Caffeine's a natural, you know, coffee's a natural substance, but genetically modified foods, artificial foods, artificial substances, sugar, you said sugar, artificial sweeteners, 
we need to eliminate that stuff from our diets completely. That's why, you know, if you're developing your psychic abilities and your abilities as an animal communicator, part of that is cleanses. Cleanses cleanse that and open that up, right? That's why you can have a third eye activation to open up that center, but ultimately breathing, meditation, and forms of healing will open that. Make sense? So this is why sometimes when people think they can't communicate with animals, it's not that they can't. It's that some part of us may be shut down that needs to be reawakened and activated. Make sense? So that's the, it's that simple. If I tune into a theta frequency and I connect with an animal and I invite that animal to have some form of a dialogue or exchange with me and I'm open, ready, willing, and able to receive and the animal says yes, because they have a free will choice just like we do, I can say, hey, you want to talk? And you can be like, yeah, yeah, you got to go. I mean, they can do that, right? But that's as simple as it is. It's either a theta frequency, it could be an alpha frequency, or it can be an exchange of information through a heart center, through empathically through the skin. And certainly they can send just like we can. There's, what are the five clairs? Clairvoyance. What's clairvoyance? What's clairvoyance? Seeing. Seeing. So you can get an image. Now you're not going to get a really good image if your pineal gland and your pituitary gland are shut down and calcified. But if they're open and the animal sends you an image, you're going to see it in your mind. But you have to get used to developing that ability to see within your mind. Because the animals are totally visual. They see, they know exactly what they see. They might not label that like, oh, Sarah's spiritual sign. Oh, that's a sign of two wings. And a, No, they might, but they can have that image photographic, and, they, and if I say, what are you looking at? If an animal's looking at that, he can show me that image. You see? They have just, they, they won't tell you, oh, it's an image on a wall. Maybe they will, but usually they won't. Make sense? So that's clairvoyance. Okay, what's the other clairs? Clairsentience. Clairsentience. So what is clairsentience? Feeling. Feeling. So I might feel something through my skin. They might send me a feeling that comes in through my extrasensory, that's when you're you know, you put loose bumps. Or else you might feel it energetically through your heart. I'm feeling sadness. I could feel their sadness. They share that with me. Or their joy, or their excitement, or whatever, right? Or they might send me a sensation that's happening in their body. I could actually feel, oh, this liver. And they might show me an image of their liver, because they know what it looks like. They might show me an image of the liver, they might send me an image of their liver, and that might, might come to my consciousness, two together, and then I get it, right? So that's clairvoyance and clairsentience. Okay, what are the other clairs? Claircognizance. So what's claircognizance? No. no. Knowing. So animal knows something. My human's sad. My human's having some challenges with the work, or my he, my pets, my bait, my pet sitters, not nice. I don't like. <laughs> Who knows what? My pet sitter had her boyfriend over, whatever. And you ask the animal, and Claire Cognizance, oh, it's, I'm just, I usually, a lot of times I'll call those a dump, like they're giving me a dump of information. It's just this information, wait, let me just sit, let me just listen, let me pay attention. I'll translate in a moment. If I'm getting a dump of information, that's clever. Or sometimes it just comes in, right? It just comes in, it's like, oh, you just know. Oh, you just know. You know, just know. You don't know how you know, you just know. Okay, that's Claire Cognizance. What else is there? Clear audience. So they hear sound. You could you could ask an animal, "What are you hearing right now?" They could be across the planet hearing a fire engine, and you could be connecting with them through an image because it's consciousness. It's their consciousness, and they could be like, "Oh, this is what I'm hearing." And you hear a fire engine in your head. You're like, "Oh, wow, they're somewhere near where there's a fire engine, right?" That's clear audience. So again, it's the master glands in the brain these other parts of our body that we awaken and start utilizing, but they can use any of those clairs to speak with us, right? Or to communicate with us. And then we, through practice and application, become translators. Now this is the biggest challenge in animal communication in telepathy. It's the hugest, biggest challenge. Because like, think about someone who comes up and translates sign language. You're on the stage, I don't know sign language. They're on the stage and they're translating and someone's speaking French and someone's speaking Italian, they're at the UN. It is their job to translate verbatim. If they decide to interpret things, they're supposed to, as far as I know, even say, oh, this is a side interpretation. But they have to translate effectively and accurately. 
And they're actually tested on it, because we can test it. See, in animal communication, there's no, we're not at that stage in our human development where we can test it. So that becomes the role of the animal communicator. And this is the biggest challenge I find for humans, because we have our filters, our beliefs, the things we believe are true. So, for example, an animal could show you, this is one of my famous examples from all my classes, a baseball bat. And one person could be like, oh, I think they went to the baseball game. And another person could say, oh, his father or his family likes to play baseball. Another person could say, I think his parents are Mets fans. His family's Mets. Another person says, I think he's been beaten up with a baseball bat. Like those are very different translations, right? So this is this is this is the to me the most challenging aspect of being an animal communicator. Because again, you could see like a red bed, and that red bed could be translated to you as he sleeps in a red bed. And you could think you're right. But he could be saying, there was a pool of blood. Those are very different things. Or he could say, uh, oh, there's a pool of flowers around me. You know, just translation. That can only be, as far as I'm concerned, developed over time with incredible practice, lots of practice, and um, a desire to really be accurate. And then we have to heal. This is the challenge. We do healing on ourselves, our own inner belief systems, the things we believe and perceive, our own, own, our own inner filters, our own inner story. That's really hard for humans because we're in our story, right, in our belief systems, and we'll, those will get in the way of our translation. <coughs> Does this make sense to everybody? Is everyone with me on this? Yeah, do you have a question? Yeah, so, so if you're not quite clear about the red bed, can you go in and ask specifically, yeah. okay, what exactly can you clarify? Yeah. yeah, you can say, I'm seeing a red bed. That's validation. So like even psych good psychics will do that. Does a red yeah. bed mean something to you? Now to a skeptic mind, there's so many skeptics in the world because unfortunately skeptics have been manipulated. Their, their consciousness has been manipulated to be skeptical. And they don't realize there's a big difference between skeptic and discernment. We're meant to learn discernment. But people who are skeptics, they don't even have any discernment. They're just too busy being skeptical. Mm -hmm. But where was I going with that? Right. Oh, so skeptics just, just think when you're asking for validation, they're like, oh, well, she asked him. She asked him what the red bed means. But they don't understand that as a psychic or as an animal communicator, what you're basically doing is, I'm seeing a red bed. I know this is significant. What does that mean to you? But you already on some level think you know. You're just looking to validate it. So you can say, I'm seeing a red bed. Is it a red bed? Give me some evidence that it's a red bed. This is part of the development of the practice because when you take classes and workshops, you learn, ah, when I'm getting a yes, some people will say, like, Sarah, you probably have something like this. Yes is a ringing in the left ear, no is a ringing in the right ear. That, that's not a universal language. That's just the way we practice working with the non-physical. Or one of the ways I always told animals, when I'm getting a yes, show me a thumbs up. If I'm getting a no, if I'm wrong, tell me no show me no, or a big X for me. If I saw an X, that was, tell me, if I'm wrong, show me X. If I'm yes, like, show me, like, sunrise. You know, like, the, but that's part of the language we develop. We have to practice it, because if you landed on, let's just, if you landed in France, and you didn't know anyone in France, and no one spoke English, you'd have to be like, yes, no, well, you'd play that little game for a while until, you know, you started to realize, oh, when he does that, it means yes. When he does that, make sense? Right. Does, that, does that address that? Yeah. Okay, so does anyone have any questions on the how it works? That's kind of, in a nutshell, really short, but not the whole story, but the bulk of it. That's kind of how it works. Make sense? Does anyone in this room think that they can't do it just based on that information? Does everyone in this room know that you can do it? Good. Okay, you're looking at <coughs> some uncertainty back there. <laughs> me? Yeah. No, about me? Yeah. I'm trying to figure out how you get to the theta, theta, right? How you get your mind there. Yeah, well, that you can't figure like your way out to that. That is a meditative practice because that is not, when you're figuring something out, by default, you're, you're in a theta, uh, beta brainwave. So theta doesn't figure anything out. I teach people how to do that. and. I don't know that we'll have time tonight, it depends. If we do, if we could, we can do it. Um, otherwise, it's because we just need a little more time for it. It's, a, it's, a, it's not a hard meditation, but you have to learn it. 
So does that make sense? Is that the one where you connect from? Yeah, yeah, you've done it before, yeah. for yeah. sure, because you've been at events with me. And since I've been working with you, I've, it's all started just coming. So. Yeah, because yeah. once you access these frequencies, you see, you can't, you can screen it out, but you once you access it, it's there. It's there. It's all, everything's available to you. This is one of the biggest, biggest truths I want to instill within everybody. Everything is available to all of us. Everything. There's no one that can't... <coughs> There's no one that has something that's not available to you too, even though it might not be part of your journey necessarily, but in that case you wouldn't necessarily want it. It doesn't mean you wouldn't go to a third party counselor, a neutral safe person to help guide you or lead you or teach you or assist you. Of course we all need one another, but it just for you to know everything's available to you. <laughs> Can I ask another question? Yeah. So when you're checking in with different animals and you're in that theta brainwave or checking in with different people, um, can you just maintain going in there? You don't have to go in and out for every different person or animal, right? Or do you need to pull in different... Sorry, I'm no, you can weird. stay there. You yeah. can stay there. The thing is, right. is that the truth is, is when you get really good at holding a theta brainwave frequency, you're coming in and out all the time. Right. You, I can go into the theta brainwave just with a breath, with a moment of silence and the breath and the energy shifts. And now I've just access a different frequency. Right. But we all can do that, but you practice it. And actually, from that frequency, you know, then, we, then you learn how to access multi-dimensional states of reality. We're living in a third dimensional reality for the most part. When we're accessing the non-physical realm, spirits, angels, benevolence, telepathic communication, we're accessing a fourth dimensional non-physical realm. That's non-physical. It's real. It's just in 3D, people don't think it's real. Well, if it's non-physical, it doesn't exist. It's not real. If it's doesn't, not physical, it doesn't exist. It's like a joke. It's like, are you kidding me? You don't think there's things in the non-physical realm? Just because you can't see it, touch it, taste it, feel it over here, it doesn't exist. But no, there's a fourth dimensional realm. And really awesome psychics are always accessing that realm. But you still have to find your own kind of gateways, right? So. Not to be confused with the term gateway, which is a separate thing, but a theta brainwave is a kind of a gateway, a frequency. So that's third dimensional realm, fourth dimensional realm. Once you access that, ah, now you can access fifth, all the way, we don't even know, infinity, but I can, I myself am conscious, fully conscious of accessing at least 13 dimensions, different states of, of reality. And they're all available to us. They Makes become sense? more and more abstract the higher you go. Yes, they do. Yeah. Yes. Because, I mean, beyond 5D, it's, non it's all non-physical for the most part. And then you have to really learn how to interpret. Yeah, you have to keep, get, keep developing. It's endless. What is infinity? Source, divine source consciousness is infinite. And the animals, because they're not busy trying to pay bills, or get along with their mother-in-law, <laughs> or, you know, figure out their job, or their life's mission, or whatever it is we go through, they're just being. So they have plenty of their consciousness to access being in these other realms of consciousness while still having the physical experience. Make sense? All right, let's talk about energy because this is a huge part of animal communication. This is so, so important. And I know there's a couple of people in the room, but who has animals who have physical diseases? Yes. Okay, so that's a big, big issue. Yes. So, and then we can talk about lost animals too, because I know that's an issue, right? But let's let's go with energy. This is so significant. Everything is energy, and all energy has a vibrational state. So, if I say the energy of one of the lowest, densest, heaviest vibrational energies, what would that be? Well, okay, that's a good one. Cancer. But what's even what, what's the energy that causes cancer? Anger. 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 That's so. And when I say it, it's just just let your body feel it for a second. It's not going to do any harm. It's a learning, right? Anger. It feels bad. Can you feel how bad that is? That's heavy. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with anger. You see, in this reality, we're taught anger is bad because you're taught not to deal. You're taught to be dumb, stupid, and unconscious. I'm saying you, but I mean all of us. That's how we function in this reality. We shut ourselves down. It's the only way you can exist in a reality where war and fighting and suffering and illness and misery exist. You have to shut yourself down. But if we really feel the anger, 
feels bad. It's not, it's not bad to feel anger. It's just, it's heavy. Fear. Fear is another one, right? Yeah. Fear, resentment, hatred. Those are all. They feel so heavy. Those are energies. And on the other end of the spectrum, we can associate with some of those really wonderful energies, right, that feel really good. Joy. Oh, my God. Joy. It feels so joyful, right? Happiness. Love. Oh, love. Everybody peace. loves love. Peace. Peace. It feels so. I woke up this morning. I was in so much peace. I had my first thought of the morning. I was like, I'm in so much peace. I feel so much peace. Oh, I don't ever want to wake up. I'm so peaceful. It's so good. It's so nice, you know? All right, so those are really what we call high light vibrations. Now, the thing is, is because we're so wound up in our left analytical brain over here in third dimensional physical world, we don't tune in. We don't take the time to be and feel and tune in to these energies. And there's all kinds of other energies, right? I'm just using the polarity type for us to understand. But our animals, they just be. So they feel all these energies. So they might not label the energy, in fact, most of the time they don't, the, the energy of anger. They might not label it as anger, but they know immediately that energy. So if you ask, what are you feeling or what's going on, they can help you to feel what they're feeling and you can identify, ah, oh, this is how the information comes in. Some form of what we just talked about will come to you, either through your heart or your sensory or your knowing or your hearing or your seeing. Then your, your left brain is going to have to send that information through your nervous system into the right brain. The right brain is going to have this awareness Oh, I just felt something. Now it's going to go back to the left brain. Travels through the whole nervous system, right? The left brain's going to go, feels like. Right brain's going to go, feeling. Left brain's going to go, anger. Oh my God, there's anger. This animal is feeling anger. But it's not the animal's not angry. But that's the energy the animal's feeling. It's making sense? Where is he getting that anger from? It's not his. You? Okay. Now we can understand kind of how it works. Does this make sense to you guys? I'm using anger as an example. The point is that the animals feel all energy. And they might not always label it the way we do because they're not using their left analytical brain the way we are overusing our left analytical brain in third dimension. Nobody meditates. They don't access the rest of the brain. But they feel all that energy. So I feel like I, I should have said one thing that I didn't say earlier, so I'm going to just say this. We're functioning from the left analytical brain which analyzes labels, you know, step one, step two, step three, assembly line, give me the seven steps to my, mir my miraculous happiness, show me how to manifest in three easy steps, fix my world's problems in seven, seven easy steps. I mean, that's what we do here. We want it laid out for us, one, two, three, easy, give me a pill, you know, Claritin will make me clear overnight, pop a pill and all will be well. That's how we're functioning here, and we're not accessing the rest of our consciousness. Animals don't do that. So what they're doing is they have some of that left brain. They can be like, oh, when mom puts those keys down there, that means she's about to get ready to go out. I know when she puts those keys and I hear the keys rattle, it's almost time to go out. Will I come? Won't I come? Like they can use their analyzing brain that way. They have some of that. But more of it, they're going to sense through the right brain, and they're going to go, what, is she excited to go out? Does it feel good? Am I going to get to come? And then they might tune in. What's her thoughts? What's she thinking? Is she going to bring me with her? Am I, do I get to come with her? Oh, she's thinking she might have to lock me in that crate. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they're picking up on it that way, right? They're not analyzing it the way we just are totally analyzing. We're not stopping and tuning in and being like, okay, wow, I'm really stressed out right now. I feel the stress. Let me shift through this, move it through my body, let it go. <sighs> Breathe, slow down. I don't want to hold on to this stress. No, what we do is, I'm so stressed. Okay, I just, if I'm going to get, so let me just get there. When I get there, I'll be better. But meanwhile, we never process through the stress. So we get there, and then we'll get better. But then, you know what, let me just get some coffee. I just need some coffee to charge to help me get through this. I'll get some coffee. And then I'll like, go through my damn shit. I can't deal with my boss. And, you know, this is how we operate. And we don't even see that this is the energy of our bodies through the day. But this is how we're operating. Got to do this, got to do that, got to do this, got to do that. And it's all being suppressed and repressed in our bodies. 
And what does this tense, tight energy density do? The moment we walk in to the house, we finally take a breath now, that energy dissipates. But the animals are in the house, so they feel it. Does this make sense? Everyone with me on this? Yeah. Okay. So this is the thing about energy. These vibrations, if we're carrying around all this unresolved stress or anger or resentment or judgment, you know, judgment sounds a lot like that F and B, how dare this person do this to me, or, you know, the wrongness, how could Vice President, how could Dick Cheney do that, or whatever. Like, I mean, you know, I go through that stuff too. I'm living in this reality too, you know. <laughs> like, you know, like, how come she didn't do this for me? Like, that's all judgment. That's all that energy of density. Or, you know, I'm so upset. I, I don't know how to resolve this. I'm so frustrated, whatever it is. When we release, our animals are effectively absorbing that. They are the sponges. They feel everything that's going on in us that we're not processing. Everyone with me on this? So their bodies now, let me just, I just want to ask Source if I, I'm going to ask for how they want me to say this. Is, uh, okay, so, so before I go on to this part about the healing, because I know people have different issues like health-wise and stuff. Does, does everyone understand how the energy works? If you've got a low vibrational energy, these low vibrational energies that we identified, anger, resentment, judgment, shame, blame, sorrow, regret, remorse, all that stuff is dense, heavy energy that tends to hang out a lot in a third dimensional reality, which is basically the physical reality where we're all separate and there's nothing, we don't give any power to this energy in a conscious way. We just carry all this stress and heavy, and then it builds up, and it moves so slow that it forms, what does it form? Disease. That's what goes on. That's why when people are really unconscious, or stressed, or overly anxious, or overly worried, or overly fearful, or overly anxious, or very angry, that energy ends up forming some form of disease, right? And so everyone understands that concept. And these lighter frequencies that we all really want to experience, they're here for us, they're available, but we're not taking the time to work through these dense, heavy energies. We're just busy doing, 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 wired into our lives, rushing and fighting against time, the limitation of this construct of time. And so we suppress and repress, it becomes disease, but the animals, they feel this, and they take it on. Make sense? I'm going to go on with that. But the, the point is, we all actually want love. We all actually want peace. We all actually want to vibrate in harmony with these energies. But the only way we can do that is to stop, slow down, process through all this stuff, somehow resolve it, and then we come into peace. We come into a kind of peace. We come into a kind of happiness. We come into a kind of joy. And we start embodying that and actually vibrating in harmony with all those energies. Make sense? Okay, but let's talk about this. So let's talk about the health. Now that we understand this concept, if these energies get stuck and they kind of coagulate and they build up and the humans carrying them around, we humans, we carry them around if we don't process through them. When we come into our house and we drop that energy just through, finally we can relax. Finally, let's turn on the TV. Finally, let's just like, you know, we're safe in our house or whatever animals feel it and they take it on like sponges. So what is, this is where I want to go next, the divine mission of animals. And then we'll go to the healing part. So the animals have three missions, three overall missions. What are they? Who knows? I know you know. You've heard it before. Anyone? Absorbing. Uh, I don't know. But That's not their mission. They do that. But so they have three missions. Number one, there are teachers, right? Sarah, have you got animals who are like, they just want to tell their they're human something. So they're teachers. They know our secrets because we're thinking things and most humans aren't paying attention to what they're thinking. We don't even pay attention to what we're thinking most of the time. But the animals pick it all up. So they know what you're thinking. They know your secrets because they can read your thoughts. And they can even catch the most subtle thoughts that you have that you're kind of depositing into your own unconscious, not consciously paying attention to. So they know your thoughts and when they pick up on that, they want to help you to know what you're unconscious of. 
what you're not paying attention to. And since they can also tune into these other realms and they kind of know who the angels are and they're aware a lot of times of cat who's got cats in the room? Cats are multidimensional. They can access these higher dimensional realms. So they know, you know, if there's you know, I'm gonna use this word dead people. There's no such thing as dead people. There's I mean there are. There's people with no physical body. Right. They hang out in the fourth dimensional realm where they may move on. But they, they, cats see interdimensionally, they see extraterrestrial star family beings, right? So they see entities, they try, they're aware of them, they're all kinds of beings in the non-physical realm. Okay, so, so they're teachers, so they're picking up that information and they're trying to help us to become more conscious of whatever it is we are experiencing in our life, going on in our life. That's the first part of their mission, make sense? Okay, second part of their mission is that they're healers. So we just explained why they how they heal, right? If I'm walking around and I'm really angry at my sister for my whole life and I'm caring for your whole life. Let's say for what? You said for your whole life. Yeah, for my whole life. If I'm walking around if I'm walking around for okay, any person walking around I guess I missed that joke. I don't get it. You said you're mad at your sister for your whole life. Meaning you've been mad at her for your whole life. Right. If I am doing that. Sounds extreme. Yeah, okay, well, but I, mean, I, I, I use extreme to make a point. Uh, okay, so a better example is actually when I was in Hawaii, I was going through a divorce. I was so angry at my ex-husband at that time. That anger, my dog took it up. She's absorbing it, right? And it turned into cancer. This is how I learned it. This is how I learned this. Then, sadly, my dog's death, and then when she crossed over, that's what led me really deeper into the healing journey because I just didn't want that to happen to people and animals if we could understand energy. And I was so angry at him that she took that on to heal me. So they absorb our energy as healers. Yeah. Now even you might say if an animal doesn't live in a family are they still doing it? And indeed they are. They're just doing it for a collective, like a local environment. So a good example, whales and dolphins, they do it, they heal the waters. Not just by taking on energy of the water, but really by transmuting that energy. Which that's a whole other story we can go into, but you know, echolocation, high pitched frequencies, and whale songs, I mean that's all vibration, right? Raising the vibration. So they're all healers, even if they're in the wild. Okay, and then the third way is what? Companions. They're having an experience just like we are. I mean, we came here to have an experience, you know? And in the third dimensional reality, by the way, all of life is about learning. You're here to learn lessons, right? I just want to tell you, one of the best things you can do is start saying that you don't need to learn any more lessons. You just need to choose wisely your experiences. Because in 5D, that's a huge part of what I teach, we don't need to learn lessons anymore. We need to claim lessons learned, they're in our knowing. And then say, ah, with my knowing, I will have this kind of experience. This is the kind of experience I choose. It's totally different, right? Makes sense? But nonetheless, we're evolving out of this place, it's out of this consciousness where we need to learn lessons. So they're doing that too, they're having an experience. And one of the biggest things I'll say too, and I'll say this especially with animals who have crossed over, even animals, you know, who are wild animals like hit on the side of the road, they're serving a higher purpose to teach some kind of higher lesson. And what they're asking, their most number one request, well, okay, sorry, I'm being corrected. <laughs> uh, there are two number one requests. Okay, but the, the number one request from the non physical realm after they cross over is not that we mourn them, but that we celebrate the lessons that we learned from them. And that we validate their purpose and their mission. Because that's like saying, that's like helping them earn their wings, so to speak. Granting them their wings. You know what I mean? It's like amazing. It's like, they're not wanting you to sit there crying over their loss. They're wanting you to be like, thank you so much. Oh my God, thank you so much. Divine source consciousness and all of consciousness. Recognize this dog for what this dog taught me. And raise him and her to the highest levels of consciousness because this being has served in such fabulous, fantastic ways that all the world will benefit through this being's, you know, 
mission that has been fulfilled. You know, by, 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 it's like you're ready. It's like the gratitude. Okay, so this makes sense, right? I'll tell you what the other number one thing is that animals ask for. So, this is a really big one. Let me say, ask Kathy one you say this. It's the number one thing that humans, I'm going to change the way I say it, but this might push a few buttons, so please don't, don't let your buttons get pushed. It just, it's, it's a button pusher. Who are the biggest abusers of animals on the planet? Yeah, yeah let's get even more specific. The way I say it is a button pusher way. It doesn't have to be said this way, but I just like to make the impact. So, animal lovers who post pictures of animals suffering are the biggest abusers of animals on the planet. And they don't know it. Why? Why is that? What they're asking is for us to not post pictures of them suffering, not spread their suffering, not indulge in their suffering, because as long as there's humans, who pay attention to their suffering. It's not, they're not saying go ignorant. They're not saying be in denial or pretend it doesn't exist. They're saying don't put your energy into our suffering. And the thing is, is that we're animal lovers. So in our minds, we're like, if you just see what's happening to these poor cows, or you just see what's being done to these poor dogs, you might make a change. But here, we just indulge all this energy into the pain and the suffering. And you see all this horrible pain and suffering. And now the universe goes, Expand all that is, because that's what the universe does. It just expands whatever you give your energy to, because you're a creator. You kind of backtrack to that. But they're saying, please stop putting the energy into showing and demonstrating and talking about our pain and suffering, and put instead your energy into celebrating all of the good things that are happening. Like, lately, one of the big things I've been getting is celebrate how much the new thing is like free range. Free range this, free range that, free range chickens, free range eggs, free range, you know, grass fed cows, like celebrate that. No hormones, no RBHT, they're like, please celebrate that more. And what cows really want now is never again take our calves from us, right? But this is what they're asking, celebrate the successes and put all your energy into how much better animals are being treated collectively. Okay, make sense? All right, cool, so I wanna get into your animals, but but you, now you have an understanding of how animal communication telepathy works and how energy works and how the animals use this energy and what their mission is, yeah? And the concept of animals who have crossed over, that they still stay with us. If I didn't say this, I'll just emphasize this. And this is true for humans too, in my experience, with humans who have crossed over, is that when they leave the third dimensional reality of physicality, the consciousness, of course, continues to exist and never dies. I'm asking if it wants me to take a side note. There's kind of a, a diversion here that there are... Okay, they're saying no. So I won't go there. So, But in any way, the consciousness of the being never dies. And this consciousness now enters into what we call a fourth dimensional realm, right? Where there's non-physicality. But they still know themselves as, I was this dog who lived with this person and I'm still this dog. I'm in a fourth dimensional realm. I still identify as my unique individualized being with no body. But I'm still connected to that person through soul family. We're, we're soulmates. So I'm going to stay with that person until our business is done and complete, which could take years more, many years potentially. Animals tend to pass on and pass through and move into another body faster than most humans do because they have less entanglements. But the more deeply bonded you are to an animal, the longer they tend to stay connected to you in the non-physical, because you have more soul work to do. Make sense? Sarah, is it, would you agree with that? Yeah. I think most, most animal communicators and psychics also agree on this. So yeah. that's a beautiful thing. If we've, anyone in the room lost an animal, like especially recently, it's just so heartbreaking for us when we lose our animal. But it is reassuring to know they are still around us, especially even human loved ones. They don't move on. They stay connected with us, and we continue to do soul work together. And they become our guides and our guardians, and they hang, they hang out in our Akashic records, and they're our masters, our teachers, our loved ones, spirits from the other side. Okay, make sense? 
Okay, cool. So uh, that's kind of the overview of what I want to offer you, but I would love for you guys to ask any questions, and we'll go anywhere you want to go with that. Like, whatever will help and serve you. Anyone? Yeah. So I have a 10-month-old a puppy, and um, it's just probably the last um, two months now, every time that I leave, you know, the crate is what you were saying. He, he now understands when I get my shoes on and the keys, and I get that, you know, because it's when I leave and I have to put him in the crate. So now he hides underneath everything. <laughs> and when I try to go get him, he's very angry. <laughs> What's his name? Healy, because he's my healer. So I named him Healy. And I swear to God, he, like, he follows me everywhere. I know he loves me like, to pieces. And, but he starts to, he gets really aggressive. And I'm like, dude. And he just, the whole crate thing. Well, can you tell me, so can you, because I can go in a lot of directions here. Okay. Because you've, la you've laid out a situation, but what is what you're, mo what's most important for you that you want to receive through what you're bringing up? I Are you wanting to know how to solve this issue? Or are you yeah, wanting why to is understand he, it better? Or? Yeah, I think so. Like, why is he, like, just now freaking out that he's being left alone? In the, I guess he's being left alone in the crate because he always wants to come with me. Right. He's got some form of separation anxiety. Huge. Yeah. So is it just that simple? So can you, just so I make sure I got the facts straight, because I'm, I, I'm always listening with, like, an open mind, and then I don't retain the information. Yeah. <laughs> so he's a 10-month-old puppy. Yeah. His name is Healy. Yeah. And... Just of recently, you've noticed that when you start getting ready to go out, he goes and hides, and then when you try to get him out of hiding to put him in the crate, he gets aggressive? Yes. Okay. Okay, so, because th th there's two things going on here. Number one is how it's linked into you personally. The sole contract. This is always the case when we have behavioral issues with an animal, there's a sole contract that's working through. It's not 100%, but it is, it really is always the case. So you got a soul contract working through issues with aggression and fear of aggression. Now where, Sarah, in your life, this is for you to answer within yourself, you don't have to say it out loud, but you want to contemplate this. Are you afraid of being bullied or afraid of aggressive behavior or repressing Repressing, that's what's lighting up as I'm getting it, your own concern about dealing with aggression. Does this make sense to you on some level? Not sure? Okay, that's, but that's just one. I, I'm, I might not be translating it exactly right. But that's one aspect because there's a sole issue of how you deal. The word might not even be, because what I'm getting lighting up is not so much aggression, but it's more like how you deal confrontation or conflict or force force against your will okay. these this kind of an issue does that make a little more sense okay. is that l l like, okay but that's one the other aspect is just a behavioral aspect so so your animal's got some form of separation anxiety or some kind of angst about being put in the crate and that's a really more like a training kind of thing because like how do you teach this animal or help this animal to understand that that crate time is safe time right. if I put someone in a four in a room and tell them it's a jail cell or if I put someone in the same room and put some nice smelling in there and tell them it's a meditation room <laughs> but it's the same room <laughs> yeah so you need to make a new association in your mind first that this crate is a safe place where he can relax and he can be safe and he can chill and meditate and trust and know that all is well. Mommy's coming back. And he's, you understand he's reading your energy because your energy is, oh my God, I'm afraid to put him in that crate. Oh my God, I'm worried about putting him in that crate. I don't ever want to leave him. I don't want to leave him. <laughs> <laughs> you understand because I know. The language of animals, the language of animals is energy first, words second. Because if I say to you, Sarah, I love you. That's a totally different energy than Sarah. Yeah, I love you. <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> right. And every
everybody know, and the room knows what it is, but yet we over here in our third dimensional reality don't let ourselves allow ourselves to believe that energy is real, and yet right here's the perfect little simplest example. Everybody got it. Your animals are, are reading the energy first. The telepathy aspects, the thoughts, and the, that vibration second, because that's an aspect of energy as well. And third is the words that you say. So you're, and they're reading into your field because understand the highest truth is this. The highest, clearest, purest truth that I know of is that we're all aspects of this divine source consciousness. However we label it, however we perceive it, we are aspects of the one divine source of infinite consciousness, infinite love, and infinite light. And we are all reflecting and emanating as aspects of that divinity. But as we embody that divinity, whether we're conscious or unconscious of it, or whatever degree we're conscious of it, that divinity is radiating out from us, and everything around us is an aspect of that. So therefore, your dog is an aspect of your divinity. And he's just as conscious as you are of whatever it is that's going on in your reality. So the point is, is the soul contract in here, okay, maybe there is an aspect of dealing with your own fear, your own worry, your own angst of leaving him alone, there may be, there's some other aspect of dealing with your own inner conflict, that was the, that's the soul contract part, but there's this other aspect of just becoming conscious of how energy flows, and your own belief system, remember we talked about belief system, about what that crate means to you, and what leaving him means to you, and oh, by the way, you might also want to look at and consider the parts of you that are afraid to be abandoned, afraid to be left behind. Because they're just bringing all this up into your consciousness however you're willing to work with it. Does this make sense? Okay. On a solution point of view, I'll just tell you this one other thing. Practice putting treats in the den. Okay, that's good. And practice putting his food in there where he has to go in there to eat his food. And if the crate, I mean, with my dog, I literally, to get her used to that crate, had to sit in there with her. It's big enough for me to sit in there. And, like, cuddle with her. Not, in other words, I'm not leaving her in there. So you practice loving in the crate. How, whatever love in the crate you can do, whether it's treats, petting, everything's fine, everything's well, because you're not leaving her. And then two minutes later, you get out of the crate. You both walk, I walk, walked out of the crate. See, so everything's fine in here. You're safe, you're well, you're fine, all is good. There's all kinds of other things you can do besides treats. You can also put beautiful scents that are, you know. Your scent. Your scent, your, your favorite blankets. Yeah. Blankets aren't good if you're great training, but, you know. Okay. Just anything that you can start to associate that with love and see and perceive it as, because from an animal's perspective, it really is a den where they're born in a den with the mommy. And if you let it be that, that's what it is. Make sense? Yeah. So I have Sydney and Sparta, a Havanese and a Bijan. When left on their own, like at night, they heard a noise, you would have thought we were under siege. So I was like, no people, we're not doing this. So we, we learned to have the, the crate there, and they would prefer to be in their crate while we're watching television, no matter what's going on, and, and they're just right there. And I say, Go to the cage, and they go, and they know they're going to get a, a treat. Matter of fact, Sparta will actually close the door <laughs> so he can get his treat. And I say, go to the cage, and then if they act up, sometimes I'll go, go to the cage. You're like, okay, this wasn't a good go to the cage. Yeah, and then they go and right thing. to the cage. You know, they're like, oh. And so we, and then sometimes I go, go to the cage, and I go, now come out. So they go out. And I go, no, go to the cage, come out. And we make a game out of it, and then they like feeling safe, especially being a little dog, littler. They like safe. So I learned that they won't bark at every little thing that they because they don't they need to feel that coziness. So we create coziness, and they will be in the in their little crate with the door open. And people are like, why are your dogs in the cage? I go because they like it better there, because I made them feel like that's home for them. Yes. All right. So wherever home is, you know, home is where the heart is. So you have to put their heart in there and make it fun. They have their little toys they bring in and. And stuff, and then when they fight over who gets the same monkey, we gotta take the monkey and put it in the other cage, and the other one, when the other one's looking, they take it out. But it's a game. So you, if you make it fun, and then the cage no longer is, I, you only go in the cage when I leave. The cage is we hang out, no matter what's going on, in the cage. Right. When we're eating, they go in the cage. When we're, you know, sometimes they want to just decide they want to whine. So we have a little, we made fun out of it. You made a yeah. lot of fun out of it. Just you, when you use that, when you use the crate, I call it a crate. This for you know linguistics, but 
when you use it, you just really want to make sure that, that the that the end note, because animals learn through, they're really good at, they work with the universal laws, which humans are, I, we don't have time to go into that tonight, but the humans are not aware of universal laws. They don't understand it, especially in 3D, but they get it. So cause and effect is when mommy rattles those keys, I'm going to be left. So start, you just want to make sure the cause and effect relationship with that crate is, yes, safety and love and play, but also not always that the next thing is that you leave. Yeah. Sometimes you're in that crate, and then the next thing is TV time and cuddle time and love time in front of the TV or with a good book or whatever. Or maybe the next thing is after we spend 10 minutes in the crate, then we go out together. Mix it up. Yeah, they're very, they're very good at being predictable that way. <laughs> they are. They are. They, that's part of how they learn. Cause, effect. When this happens, that happens. Yeah. When this happens, that happens. So, okay, cool. What else? All right, then I'm going to go. Can I go here first yes. and then I'll come back to you? Okay, cool. Okay. okay, I have an 18 year old cat. Her name is Piper. She's insulin dependent and has been for about five years now. Um, and that's fine. She, her health is fine on, on insulin. She has, in the past four or five months, started howling. And she howls very, very loudly. And she'll howl through the night. She'll wake the family up. She's howling during the day, even when we're over there. It's just this really loud howling. Can you just make sure that he doesn't? I'm sorry, That's I'm okay. hearing you, but there's a, like a guy whose lights are on, and my car is right on the line of the. I just want to make sure it's okay. Can you just look out of that window? The guy or your car? No, the guy's got his lights on, and he's been driving around. No, it's, it's probably security. Security! <laughs> That's all security. Okay, all right. I don't know why. Because my car is right there, and I've seen him a little time, and it's just. Okay. All right. So Piper. So she's been howling, and she's insulin dependent. Yes. And can you tell me again your name? Carissa. Okay, Carissa. So I want to let's go to the insulin thing. Mm -hmm. This is this is the this is a hard part. So insulin from an energetics as a healer, when we're insulin dependent, we're dependent on something external to us, an external solution to regulate the sugar flow in our life. What is the sugar flow from a metaphysical, spiritual, higher consciousness, the sweetness of life, which translates to the joy and the enjoyment of life? Mm -hmm. So far, does this make sense, just conceptually? OK. I'm going with you. When you say OK, that <laughs> tells me you're yeah, not Yeah, I know. Okay. I'm kind of lost you. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm here. I'm listening. OK. I'm Insulin. To... Yes. Is the is what we use as type type two diabetes? Yes. Mm -hmm. So she has type two diabetes. Oh, yeah, it came on later. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So diabetes is an energetic vibration. That diabetes can be translated to words. All energies can. If I'm if I get really angry and mad at you, you we can translate that to that energy of anger. She's anger. Right? So now let's translate the energy of diabetes, non-medical terms. Mm -hmm. The energy of diabetes is there's not enough sweetness of life. Mm -hmm. I can't regulate. I can't. I don't seem to know how to have joy or enjoyment or somehow it's I'm not in flow and harmony with joy mm -hmm. and sweetness of life. Does this make sense? Okay. So when we use insulin. It's an external thing, external to the body, external to the mind, external to the emotion, to help us regulate the sweetness that we experience. Mm -hmm. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to pause it. I'm just asking. Right. So if you think about it from an energetics point of view, your cat, I'm going to get to the howling. First, I'm dealing with this diabetes. Mm -hmm. Your cat as an energetic, environmental person with you, sharing your environment. Is anyone else in the house? Living yeah. in the house? Okay. A husband? Mm-hmm. Okay. But kids? Yes, one. Older kid? No, he's six. Oh. Yeah, it's not connected to the kid at all. Now, it has nothing to do with the kid when I'm telling you, but it does have to do with you and your husband. Okay. So if we're talking about diabetes, there's an energetic of I can't, I don't have sweetness in my life mm -hmm. or enjoyment, right? <coughs> okay. And if our animals are the sponges and the healers, your animal, from this perspective I'm sharing with you, is asking you to look at the enjoyment of your life. Mm -hmm. 
and the sweetness in your life? And how much enjoyment and sweetness are you having? Mm -hmm. So this is the first question. Does this make sense to you? I mean, I... you don't necessarily have to answer it right now. Okay, I'll think about it. <laughs> Yeah, when, I, mean, I know this yeah. stuff so life well rushed, that it's, right? it's hard yes. for me sometimes to uh, say to you, I know, but mm -hmm. I know. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm talking about here. Okay. When there's diabetes in an animal, it is, I've done this so long, I, so it's not for me to give you, to tell you. Mm -hmm. It is for you to consider. But I know that is what animals do. They absorb what's going on in the house and diabetes as a healer, because I've healed diabetes in it so many people and animals. I mean, I'm not the healer. I'm just an energetic, okay, whatever. We don't need to go to that, that definition. But the point is, is that frequency that's holding the diabetes in place is asking for the human in the animal's world, that animal by soul contract is asking, can you please allow more sweetness into your life and to know and trust that you can live in harmony with sweetness and enjoyment and pleasure in a way that feels good and right for you, where you're not only allowing it in, but you're knowing it exists part of your existence, and you're in flow with it. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. That is what's at the root cause of the diabetes. So the call is for you to find more jo joy. I would be willing to bet if I did your numbers, there'd be a significant six in the life path. What's your birthday? Uh, July 31st. And what's your year, if you're willing to say your year? 74. I, I, it's hard for me. I'm trying to add the numbers. <laughs> but anyway, it almost doesn't matter if I do the numbers. If you add the numbers across somewhere, there's probably a six, or else the six could be a karmic number. Nonetheless, it doesn't matter. It's 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 some this is a diversion because I like to double check what my my intuitive tells me with numbers sometimes. The point is, is that's a key lesson there for you. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, I would recommend to you on a physical level, Dr. Peter Dobias. Dr. Peter Dobias is a veterinarian. I love, another one is Dr. Karen Becker. They're both veterinarians. So you can learn about them on the internet. And they talk about how to heal diabetes uh, on a physical level. But from a physical perspective, we can talk about food because all of our animals want to know more about food. Because from the food level, right, you need to eliminate all kinds of sugary foods and give raw. I'm a raw food, a raw food advocate with pets. But we, we'll talk. Let's we'll talk about food afterwards. So that's that. Now the the, the crying and the, the the screaming. I've heard about that a lot. When an animal starts going into some kind of, either especially cats, renal or kidney or pancreatic distress, that will happen. So obviously we know this sugar imbalance, insulin, highs, spikes, and lows can create that. Right. And she's also 18. Yeah, I mean, she's so older. Yes, I understand there's, yeah. you know, that, that aspect of it. So your but your cat is calling out in distress. Okay. Because her body is physically distressed. Crazy. Okay. And this Distress is a call to action on your part, too. Does this make sense? Yeah, that part. I mean, is I your relationship with your husband, how is your relationship with your husband? We have a good relationship. It's just we're very busy, you know, so we, we're always going, going, going. But as far as, you know, our relationship, yeah. we're happy together. Yeah, okay, we just shifted some energy. That's good. Actually, you did. You really just got a lot of information that makes a lot more sense to you now. I, I get it. Do you, are you aware? Do you see? There was a big healing that just happened, just in terms of your consciousness shifting. That's good. All right. So, it, so when you say you're really, really busy like that, mm -hmm. that's it. You're 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 programmed into probably slave, slave driver, workaholic, work, 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 work. No time for sweetness. No time. That's typical diabetes. I, it's mm -hmm. it's linked in. I, I said this a lot of times. It's linked in to our genetic ancestry especially during the time of the 1900s and the Great Depression, when humanity shifted from no time for enjoyment, work, work, 
work, no time for pleasure. That's a genetic, that's on the genetic and the ancestral level in the bloodline, in the DNA. So in a sense, Carissa, you are here to heal and resolve that in this lifetime. And your cat is helping you. And there's other cats. Have other cats had this so far? The other cat recently passed away, and at the very end of her life, she got it, but it was very brief. Okay, but I got that red flagged, and your cat is saying, don't let it happen to another cat. <laughs> my my stressed out, busy life is killing my cat. <laughs> I understand, uh, just on a side note, this, in the physical reality, which also we can refer to, you guys have heard the age of Aquarius and the age of Pisces. All right, the age of Pisces is two fish swimming in opposite directions. Are you going here or are you going there? It's Pisceans, while often that energy is about love, it's also sometimes about obliviousness. Am I going here? Am I going there? I'm going to have a good time. Who cares? Let's just have fun and play. That's very Piscean. Let's just have fun and play. Who cares if we're damaging the planet? Who work, work, work is part of that. Who cares what, how it's going to affect me? But in the age of Aquarius, what Aquarius is, is the reason Aquarius is a water bearer is that Aquarius, they're very smart, they're, they're, they're a mental plane, they're a, but they have to dig for the emotional wound. That's what we're going through now. Humanity now, we have to find the wounding in us and transmute it through our own inner emotional transformation. That is Aquarian. That's the Aquarian age that we've just entered. That is also shifting out of 3D. We're, we're completely oblivious. We don't know how. We, we're victims in 3D. Diabetes is something that happens to us, not by us or from us in 3D. But in order to move through the non-physical realm of 4D that we're talking about, non-physical, and get into 5D where really we are all shifting and moving into, which is a, a frequency that's based in love and peace, kindness, compassion, and understanding, we have to be willing to get conscious of this non-physical stuff that's creating it. So your way of living is not supporting your happiness and your joy. In fact, quite the contrary. Somewhere within you that you're not being real about, you're not fully enjoying it. No way would your cat have diabetes if you were. Can you understand? Mm -hmm. And I mean, I'm not, there's no judgment here. It's just we're, we're looking for answers. And that's, that's my role. That's what I do. When I'm looking for answers, I want someone to give me, sometimes it's hard truths, right? It's a calling for you to change the way you're living. Because I will tell you also, in 5D, the new reality that we're shifting into, it's not based on pain and suffering and misery. You can't take your baggage with you where we're going on planet Earth. And these changes are going to be so radical in the next, I know we're here for animals, so. They're going to be so radical. You're going to start seeing them so radical in the next, because in May, May 15th, a few days away, Uranus is moving into, the, into Taurus. That means radical changes in the way we live, in the way we deal with Mother Earth, our physical body, our physical form, our systems, our money system especially, physicality. So what is happening is your cat is giving you a major wake-up call, so did the other one. Start enjoying mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. You need to enjoy life. All right. I hope that's. I spent a lot of time there, so I hope that's helpful. <laughs> Does that? Well, yeah. It's just it's, you can, figuring out how to reverse, you know, the mortgage and the, the, all the things that you have to, you know. All right. Well, I'm going to give you the short words. answer, and then I want to move on, just to be fair to other people, because I could spend hours on this. Okay. I mean, this is what I do for a living, so I'm I'm really good at it. But it's just, look, get right with God. Everything else writes itself. So in 3D land, we're running around like a bunch of chickens with our heads cut off. Fish swimming that way, fish swimming. Am I coming? Am I going? Yin, yang, out of balance, masculine. But not, nobody knows. We're all a mess here yeah. trying to find our way. And the only way to find your way is to get right with God. And when I use the word God, what I really mean is the divinity of the infinite, irrepressible, unconditional love acceptance, peace, consciousness, which exists within you. And yes, it exists around you. There's nowhere that it doesn't exist. It's just you have to get, get aligned energetically with that. And that, one of the most basic first steps is just breathing and slowing down. 
meditating, healing, reconnecting with source. Because it's in there. You can't write your bills over here. You can't pay your bills. You know, the more frenzied, neurotic, crazy, overworking you are, the, you just keep digging a deeper ditch for yourself. So then the next cat gets diabetes too. Because it's what happens, right? This is a wake up call. Stop. Breathe. Slow down. Source creator, what are the solutions available? What so ask source, what are the solutions available which are the highest and best solutions available to us? To help to assist us so that we can really vibe vibe in harmony with happiness and joy. That's what the that's the mission of this cat, and that is the divine purpose here for your soul. Your soul. I use that word, but your soul's journey. So get right with source, because source is the only thing that will make it right. You running out of control, overworking is making it wrong. Make sense? All right, I hope that's helpful. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so let's come over here, because you had a question I said I gave Okay. Yes, yeah, so my dog... I just want to check on time, because I know we have... My dog was um, diagnosed with bone cancer almost a year ago, 11 months ago. Yes. And um, her, one of, like, her radius is almost uh, 10, eight, nine months ago, almost even through completely. Um, and um, she has been... Which bones are we talking about? Specific the, ra uh, the radius, radius and the ulna. Okay. So it's the right front. Of, um, of her front of her leg. Front leg. Okay. So the top, uh, the, okay. the top part of her leg. Yeah, okay. And um, so she has been, she's absolutely amazing. She, I mean, and you have helped me a lot with her. I had a private call with you and yeah. you, I've adjusted her diet and the supplements and all that kind of things. And, um, she, nobody could ever tell that there was anything wrong with her. She had a slight limp. Now it's a little bit more, uh, a lot more. She in the last couple of weeks, she's her inflammation has got greater, um, and now she has a. I don't know if it's a tumor. I thought it was a fatty tumor. It might be, but it's getting bigger on her right at the top of that leg mm -hmm. and chest. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, it's just it's just got puffed out a little bit, and I think it's you know I I haven't wanted to put energy into it as in telling people it's cancer, but at this point, you know, I don't, anyway, yeah. and I know, I know, it goes very deep, so um, I'm happy for you to tell me well, what Well, okay, so I don't want to kind of repeat things that I know you know, you know, because I know you've, uh, you, you're already familiar, but we, we do know our bones are symbolic of our structure. Now, what does the structure of our lives mean? What does stru the structure of your life mean to you? The structure of your life typically has to do with your work, your family, your career, your home. It can even have to do with the connection to the universe in general. But when we're talking about cancer, cancer is always anger and resentment. That's what cancer is. So when we're looking at the energetic of the frequency and vibration of cancer and we're looking to heal and resolve that issue and we make that connection to the structure of my life the bones often represent, you know, even your family lineage. On the one level, you want to resolve it, but you don't want to indulge. Of course, you don't want to indulge in the thinking of what's wrong. The indulgence is, again, it's always source is the solution to everything as far as I'm concerned. So divine source, I always start when I'm dealing with something that seems impossible. Like, you know, doctor says you can't heal this. We immediately go to, oh, well, the doctor said it, therefore the doctor's God programmed into that belief system, right? So I go, source, what is possible, what would be possible in terms of healing and resolving this issue, in this case the bone cancer, and this, that would help this, is it possible that this dog could be restored? Is it possible that this dog could be restored to her ideal and optimal state of health and well-being? That's a good question. And is it possible that that could happen in a way that's loving and joyful? What is it that we need to drop away or release gently, lovingly, benevolently, expediently so that this healing can take place? What do we need to drop? What do we need to release? What do we need to let go of? Because it's an energetic vibration that you're, you want to let go of, right? And what do we need to call forward that, that, that's being called forward from us that wants to emerge? 
as a result of this experience, so we can align with that. Because the calling is always for health, well-being, happiness, joy, love, peace, harmony, compassion, forgiveness. It's always one of those higher purposes. So the question is, how do we let that emerge? How do we release that which is binding us, hooking us into, entangling us in this lower energetic that somehow is related to the bones, you know, our stability, our structure, probably our ancestors, and anger and resentment. What is it that we can release and heal and resolve around that? It's making sense. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, so she's a family dog, so it could it be said the It's always the family. family. It is always. Yeah, the so it's not a specific individual, just me or just my husband, or it's, it's kind of like a relationship thing. Well, let me say, I mean, it's not, you can't always, always. It's, it's, it's always the family because the family is sharing an environment. Mm -hmm. And everything is environmental. I mean, do, you know, our, some of our best doctors who are good doctors know that. Bruce Lipton, perfect example, right? Everyone loves Bruce oh, Lipton. Right. You guys all know Bruce Lipton, right? I mean, he's like, everything's environmental. So, I mean, the, the environment of your cell creates, you know, the environment of your thoughts. Your thoughts create the environment. So yes, everything's environmental, so it's the whole family. But sometimes there's a soul contract with unique individuals. So, you know, and that's usually when the animal's closer to one over the others. All right, so. So this is part of just what I'm picking up psychically, intuitively. And I mean, yeah, your dog's here. You know, his consciousness is here. I mean, he's such a, he's so nice and sweet and, you know, he makes me laugh uh, inside. Just that I have a, I, I'm connected with him. But really, it's more like, Francie, some part of you, I'm, I'm even seeing the validation and even in your name. It's like you want to do one thing, but you're conforming based on this structure of what you're supposed to be or what you believe you're supposed to be. This conformity is debilitating. This is the words I'm hearing. This conformity. So it's not just about, yes, it's healing and forgiving the family lineage, but it's more like where you're needing to conform and believing and perceiving you're supposed to be something, when in reality you want to be a free spirit. It's that part of you that wants to go out and do something else. Fly, free, play, have fun. I think it's career, I want to change your career. Is that making sense for you? Change what you do for a living? Well, I'm already in a pretty good place, but it can keep on evolving. Um, could it be a relationship related? Well, of course it can be, right? So, you you know, it's like, it's so, all of yeah, that. That's it's that yes. overall energetic. I mean, if we go deeper, could it be a relationship? Just the fact that you asked that, of course, that's your knowing. Don't let me dictate your knowing. I'm, I'm adding what I'm receiving, but you ultimately know. If it's a relationship thing, yes, okay, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. But is that part of your free spirit that does not want to have to conform or restrict to this structure of what you've been told or believed that you were supposed to be? And that part of you is like angry because it's too conforming, right. too constricting, this old structure, and, and there's a, a subtle resentment or anger to that, and that's that energy that needs to be transformed. Does this make sense? Yeah. And I mean... Just because of timing, we don't, we're not doing energy healing today, although, I mean, we, we could potentially go there, you know, it's just not enough time to fit it all in, you know. But I know if you keep doing the energy healing, that is going to make a huge difference because ultimately, we can't figure our, I'm such a firm believer, we can't figure our way out of this stuff. We can't even meditate our way out of it. I'm a big proponent of healing because what the healing does is, it shifts the energy, it expands the consciousness, and it basically, in reality, takes you from this reality to another parallel reality where it's resolved. That's totally esoteric, but it's true. Does this make sense? Is everyone with me or have I lost you guys? Is everyone with me? Can I go to? Yeah? Okay, but does that help? Yeah. So. Yeah, so in whatever level it makes sense to me. I mean, definitely career-wise. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's morphing already. It's morphed. But definitely yes. the kind of feeling restricted in the space and the reality that I live and just really knowing that I have the responsibilities that I have, yet really having that almost an impatience to want to spread my wings. Yeah. See, you're filling in the blanks that you know to be true. 
I'm just offering up what's presenting, but you already know what it is. So the question then for you becomes a little bit more also of like, you know, how do I live in a way that's going to allow us, me and, you know, my family and my dog, my animals, how do we start living in a way that's going to allow the expansion, that expansion of just that lightness and that enjoyment, that pleasure, so that we can live in our ideal and optimal state of health and well-being. Does that make sense? Yeah. I will say for inflammation, since you brought yes. up inflammation, inflammation in the body is inflamed emotions that are suppressed. Now look, just from our interaction, Franzi, you're very contained. But, I mean, if my animal was sick, I'd be like, help me, I don't know what to do. Why you like my dog? Yes, I've tried everything. You know, because like I'm an emotional person. So if we're suppressing our emotions or containing them, where is that? It's going to be inflamed. By the way, I mean, I don't know. See, nobody in here really knows me. But in the last four months, I've dropped like 20 or maybe more pounds. I don't know. Because I've been working with the emotions, like to get rid of some of these emotions that have just been built up, weight is very often stored emotions. It's a form of inflammation. Inflammation is emotions that are unprocessed. So if you're not allowing yourself to experience the emotions, they're going to show up as inflammation. Does this make sense? Now, and your animal's going to take it on energetically. What so helps? Should, should I run and shout? <laughs> well, a really good thing is sacred dance. Do you know sacred dance? Um, I do my version of it. I don't know. Okay, any kind of sacred dance is awesome. There's some great. There's some great places like in Del Rey. We don't have ones close up here. Sacred dance, but Del Rey and Boca, they play. You know, esoteric music. You just move your body. You let your body express. Five rhythms is another name of it. You can go on meetups and find sacred dance circles in the area. Let your body move. The body wants to move. Over here, we're conformed. You know, you have to dance a particular step. Put your right foot. That's what. This, this. No, over here, it's about how does the body need to express and move and flow. You go in the bathtub and you just start going, oh, what I need to do. I get a lot. But this is what the body wants to do, and we over here we haven't been letting ourselves do it. Yeah, this is structure. Get right free of the structure. So go move the body, dance, express. You know, when I was going through my own healing journey, this is so funny. This is like years ago. I remember. I'm not gonna share this story. It's so embarrassing, but I, I don't really have any more embarrassment left in my body. Or maybe I don't know. But anyway, I played that music. This is I mean, years ago, living in LA. You know that song, In the Jungle? I remember putting that on on Friday night, all the lights out and the candle, dancing around my house naked. Because I needed to just went, this was, that's what I mean, I needed to, I was trying to wake up, I was trying to open up. That's what we need. But this suppression, repression, conformity, it's killing us on planet Earth. So do invite some of that in. And let's just, oh, inflammation. Okay, the other thing for the inflammation of the body that's always really good with inflammation is turmeric. Mm -hmm. The challenge with turmeric is it needs to be taken with some kind of healthy oil, mm -hmm. which hemp oil, do you, are you using those? Yeah, I'm using a CBD. CBD oils, awesome. Yeah, and turmeric mostly, yeah. Yeah. I mean, those, all those other things, turmeric is awesome. The problem with turmeric is it has to be taken with a fatty, and if there's a, yeah. if there, some kind of fat, but also if there's some kind of, um, if there's medical prescriptions, turmeric sometimes is not always, the, is he on some kind of medical stuff? No. Okay, that's good. Natural. Physical, pharmaceutical, okay, good. Yeah. So, yeah, CBD oil, turmeric, what else for inflammation? Beta Thyme, you know what that is? She's on that, I don't know if that's a brand name, Beta Thyme. And then she's on the reishi and the... Reishi's chlorella good. And, Reishi's a uh, cure for like yeah, everything. Chlorella, Shaga. Chlorella, uh, spirulina. Did you get her on... Mm -hmm. I know what the other thing that's lighting up. The bone... Yes, bone broth. Not bone broth, I'm sorry. Sissus. Okay. I'm telling you, you can't let another day go without sissus. Okay, if there's a bone problem, a joint <laughs> problem, you need sissus. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good. You shifted some energy on that. Good. 
Yeah. All right, I hope that's helpful. Thank you so much. Yeah. And next time, when you come on the 18th, make sure you bring a picture. Not on your phone. Okay. I'm, I, I, would, I need to tell people to do this. You bring pictures and we'll put the pictures in and they get it. You don't even have to work. Just bring a picture that you can leave. With you? No, yeah, just during the healing. Yeah, okay. Okay? All right. Who else? You want to talk about your star? Your dog? Yeah. Um, I'm having a major problem with my dog. She's five, going on six. I had to have a cancerous tumor removed. And the woman that I had purchased her from basically told me um, there's nothing I can do. She has hip dysplasia, she has a lot of problems, but she has a lot of anxiety and I know it's coming from me. Uh, I have a lot of things going on in my life, but I'm so worried about her that I don't know what else I can do. So it's like, you are like my saving grace right now. And so, you know, Jamie knows what I'm going through and she's mutilating herself, and it's killing me to see her do this. I'm like, stop it, stop it. And then she'll like look at me with these sad eyes, and she's a beautiful uh, English lab, and it's like my soul is broken because I don't know what else I can do for her other than. Okay, so I want to stop you there. I, I wish I had a tape to play back what you just said. Mm -hmm. Because every word was, I'm so worried, it's killing me, my soul is mutilated. And so, on an energetic level, there's like some kind of like self-abuse going on in you. Can you hear it? Does everyone, I know there's no judgment. We're all here going yeah. through all of our stuff, really. But I don't want to say, so, I'm not the pity party person. It's okay, you're not a pity party person. We just have to be real. We all have to wake up and get real with how we're self-abusing. Yeah. We have been self, self-mutilating, self-attacking, self-sacrificing, self-sabotaging. That is the name of the game on planet Earth. We make ourselves less than, smaller than, we belittle ourselves. So that's the first thing lighting up. You're self-abusing. And she is self-abusing. You're self-mutilating. This is killing me. Yes. All that stuff. So the shift in your consciousness right there is part of part of this. Only a teeny part, but still significant to get you out of that programmed way of behaving and that pattern of, of being where you're beating yourself up on any level at all, where you're self-abusing, where you're allowing any form at all, where you're tolerating that which, you know, on planet Earth we've been taught tolerance, yeah. but we have been taught tolerance to our own detriment. We are tolerating things on planet Earth that are intolerable. We are accepting things that are unacceptable. And this is crazy. What's crazy making on planet Earth what's happening? So you just we, you need to look at that. That's a calling for love, self-love. So she loves you to death, and you love her to death, but everybody's dying. Right. So literally, start to change that pattern. Just by becoming conscious of the fact that we've been doing it is the first step. Because then you make an attention, okay, now I'm conscious of the fact. I can hear those words, like I'm going to try and get this, hopefully, if it's working on YouTube, and you can re-listen, right? Okay. But you want to cast, start catching yourself where you're self-abusing, right? Because she's just mirroring that. Our animals are mirroring. It's just not always obvious to us. Okay, then the second thing is, let's address it on a physical level. Because whenever we have these issues, you understand, if, if, if I haven't already made this absolutely clear, we have a physical level we need to address it on through supplements and healthy food. Then we have a, an emotional level we have to address it on, the way we feel. That's that's the heaviest energy. How do we feel? Do we feel angry? Do we feel upset? Do we feel happy, joyful, in love? These are polarized examples, but there's all those ranges in between, right? So when there's an issue, we have to address it emotionally. Then we have to address it mentally. So mentally, I'm abusing myself, beating myself up, using verbal abuse, the way I talk to myself or about my life. It's a mental level, right? And then, yes, energetically, there's just like, there's layers of energy beyond that even, like light level, light, light that emanates and, okay, we don't have to go there for now because it's, it's almost beyond what we need to cover. So, all right, so on a physical level, your dog, we started to talk about this. Let's just, cats and dogs, dry food, crap. If it's dry food, it doesn't matter what they tell you. Oh, it's 90% protein. It's the best dried food. You know, royal canine. Veterinary 
If it's in a dried food bag, it is crap. Why? I know I'm very emphatic about this. Why? Our dogs and cats come from wild animals. Genetically speaking, they hunted other wild animals. That means they eat fresh, dead, raw meat. That means their bodies through lineage are most adapted to eat raw meat. So that means if we can substitute as close to that as possible, raw meat for them. <laughs> I can see your face, Jamie. But you're probably a vegetarian or a vegan. No, or... OK, well, no, <laughs> he's because you're making a funny face with that raw meat. But that's what they eat. So for me, I buy my dog's food. I try to get the very best brand I can that's 100% all natural raw and they say humanely raised. Now I hope that's true because I love other animals too, but nonetheless this is like this crazy kooky up mixed up society we live in. It's just they need raw meat. Now if you don't want to buy the raw meat from a freezer that is made for a, a pet, they have it dehydrated too. You can make it yourself at home using, you know, organic chicken or turkey or whatever, fish, and you use it a species appropriate, I mean I like veterinarian approved recipe. I say that because vets who do know, who are educated, some there are not many of them in educated healthy nutrition, but when they put their stamp on veterinarian, I know this is the right amounts, they've done their research, that validates it. But you have to have a certain percentage primarily of raw meat, then some veggies and some fruits in there, and no grains. So you can get a veterinarian approved species appropriate diet. I, I recommend, I always recommend my ebook online. You go to amazon.com and search my name, Lori Spagna, or it's called Stop Feeding Me Junk Superfoods for You and Your Pets. Either way, you can search yourself to find recipes online that are veterinarian approved and you can make it yourself, right? So that's on a physical level, no dried food. By the way, I feel the same way about canned food. It's dead and it's not even real food, it's processed crap. So, all right, then you need to add supplements because unfortunately the food itself is not strong enough. So when you're dealing with an animal who's coming out of candida, that's what that is. You understand what candida is? Do you guys understand what candida is? It's an epidemic on planet Earth right now, right? It's from the overgrowth of unhealthy bacteria in the body. And it lives on sugar, alcohol, bread, yeast products. So when we feed our animals dried food, the body takes that dried food, turns it to carbohydrates in the body, which that's not what they eat in the wild, and then those carbohydrates basically create all kinds of sugar in the body. And when there's an overgrowth of sugar, and then the moment you bring them to the vet, well-meaning vet goes and sticks them with some kind of antibiotic, kills all the bacteria in the body. So now there's no good bacteria. But then we go and feed them some more sugar. No good bacteria, all bad bacteria flourishes. Does this make sense? That's why we have to get them off the sugary food, which includes carbohydrates, bags, and canned food. Okay, I made that point. So you switch them to a raw diet. If you don't like raw, you can do lightly home prepared, home cooked, and you could follow an appropriate, species appropriate diet, yes? Then you supplement. What do you have to supplement? Number one, you need a really good quality, healthy probiotic. This is Peter Dobias, Dr. Peter Dobias. I love his probiotic for pets. But honestly, I've compared the pet probiotic to my human one. It's the same. It's the same lactobacter, you know, I don't know what they're all. Long names. So you need to put a probiotic. That alone is not even enough. You need to do a cleanse. The way to cleanse candida overgrowth, this is your answer that you've been looking for on a physical level, is colloidal silver. I saw that. Well, well, silver, we just like silver, colloidal, C-O-L-I-D. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm spelling it wrong, too. I-A-L, if you plug it in close, you'll get it. I think it's two L's, but we can. Okay, maybe two L's. John, back here. Oh, uh, yeah. 
No, no, John, no, no, John, you know what you're saying. That's good. So you, there's some great colloidal silver products online made specifically for pets. Some of them have a spray. You want to spray it right in the toes, wherever she's chewing. And there's some internal. It's fine. I cleansed all, all my candida with colloidal silver and aloe vera juice. Aloe vera is also really good. Aloe vera juice. Those are just basic things on the physical level. You also need some other things in there. What about coexistence? Because I just need eighty dollars for that. Um, because she's limping really bad. Cosequin. Mm -hmm. Can you say your dog's name again? So Angel. Angel. Cosequin. I'm gonna muscle test for Angel. Highest truth for the dog Angel who lives with Star. Highest, clearest, purest truth. Cosequin for her body. Nope. Okay. Highest truth. Colloidal silver for her body. Yeah. We'll cast her up. Just muscle testing. Kinesiology, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not getting yes on that. I don't know that product. I've heard it before. What is it? Is it it's a pharmaceutical? Um, Cosequin. Oh, yeah. I've heard it. Glucosamine. Oh, yeah. Glucosamine. Oh, Glucosamine. I got it at PetSmart. It's Glucosamine. Oh, yeah. I don't really like any of their products. I'm sorry. I like their leashes. PetSmart. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so anyway, that's a good starter, right? Now let's just go a little bit deeper on this, and I know I just want to check on time. So we're, we're okay on time for now, right? Oh, so we talked about physical. You need supplements. These are the basic supplements. By the way, I have an awesome video on YouTube. Go look it up. Lori Spagna, healthy food for you and your pets. It's free. I mean, I literally, I'm in my kitchen. I'm like, I do this, I do this, I do this, I do this. Don't do this, don't do that. Like, it's so, it's basic. Every educated person would agree on it. So look at that video because you need to add other supplements. But I'll give you the basics. Every animal should really have um, um, chlorella. Understand chlorella is green minerals, right? It's superfood. You can't overeat it. It's superfood. It's green minerals that comes. It's just great stuff. So you can give like four, for your dog her size, four of them twice a day, you know, tablets. Spirulina, every dog should have spirulina, and every cat. Chlorella, spirulina, you're making a funny, funny face back there, Clarissa. Oh, no, I don't have an age. Chlorella, spirulina, <laughs> hemp oil. You can get that at Whole Foods. Tablespoon, hemp oil every day. Coconut oil is not good if they've got candida, but other than that, you can use candida to soothe itchy spots. I mean, coconut oil on topically, anything itchy, it's just that it's, it's sugar. Coconut is a fruit sugar. So when, when you're dealing with candida overgrowth, it's not the best choice. But other than that, people, if you don't have candida, coconut oil is a great thing to put. Uh, ghee, ghee, you know what ghee is? Clarified butter. Clarified butter, you can get that in Publix. <laughs> Give her a teaspoon of it, a tablespoon. It's the healthy, it's so healthy, it's so good for them. They love it. Um, milk thistle cleans the liver. Milk thistle capsules, you can get them anywhere. My other favorites are the mushrooms. The only issue with mushrooms, some people and animals have allergic issues to them, and I don't, allergy is just another belief system that needs to be healed in the body. You understand what an allergy is? Is a belief yep. that something in the outer world controls me. Yeah. Therefore, I have an allergy, but if you clear the belief, the allergy can be clear. But yet, there's layers of it, so anyway, that, that's the only reason I'm a little hesitant to say mushrooms, but I'm a huge mushroom fan. Super mushrooms, reishi, shaga, cordyceps, lion's mane, mataki, shiitake, shaga, did I say that, reishi, no, shaga? Yeah. Cordyceps, lion's mane. I take them all. I take like 10 of them a day myself, and I give my dog five of them a day or more. So I'm a big, huge fan of those. But that's it. If you give her the healthy oils, every cat and every dog should be on that. And you can't think that you're doing it wrong because it's food. You don't sit there and say, oh, should I have two French fries or five? No, you just eat what you want. It's chlor It's food. Okay. I made a big enough statement about that. Yeah? Are we all good on that? Is that helpful to you guys? Mm -hmm. yeah. No dry food. <laughs> yeah. All right. So let's go back to you energetically. A little bit more on this. When we're talking about the pause. So all energy vibrates at a frequency. Yeah? 
And we know that our bodies are made of major energy centers. We know this energy center is our what? Well, let's see. This one is our what? Well, this is our base chakra. We call it the base chakra or the root chakra. Now, lots of people don't believe in chakras. That's fine with me if you don't believe in them. I mean, what's a belief? It doesn't it's matter. Just, it's there. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's so ridiculous that people would not deny the evidence of chakras. When, if you want to deny that this is a major energy center, I, I, I'm sorry, then you're in ignorance land. But I'm not getting to that. So when you're talking about feet or paws, that's connected to the root chakra. So what is the root chakra all about? What is this energy center about? Letting go. This is where we let go of stuff. <laughs> so where are you having trouble letting go of things? Yeah. So, yeah, that's right. When you say, do we have a week? Now, when you talk about there's a tumor, where's the tumor? Where did the tumor develop? Uh, her right hip. Okay, hips. What's hips? This is the same energy center. Okay, hips could also be a little connected to the second energy center. They're not really controlled as much by the second. But you understand, it's this area. And the third energy center here is, someone said, solar power. Belly. Yes, that's your personal power. This is where we where we harness our personal power, which is the connection of our connection to the earth, our ability to let go, and our ability to bring things in, hold them into our heart center, embrace our love. All of this is stored up here in our core pillar, in our pillar. Uh, and not pillar, sorry, that's the wrong word. Solar, moment. Uh, solar plexus. So you're talking about a tumor on the hips. What are the hips? The hips mobilize the body in moving forward in life. Where are you angry and or feeling immobilized about how you're moving forward in life and where you might be not letting go of things appropriately, particularly through your own self-sabotage, your own self-deprecation. This is the mission of your dog to help you heal and resolve that. Do I listen to her? Hell no. Yes, no, okay, but that's the whole issue. That's that control. Now listen, do you say that? Go. Do you listen Let to her? Where are you stubborn in life? She won't stop licking. She won't stop. Why right. won't you stop? They're always mirroring for us. Exactly. I think it's because I want to be in control, but she really is more in control. Right, so so this whole thing then, now, now this is my thing. I, I always call out the shadow aspect. These are the shadow aspects of what you're dealing with in your life at this time, that your dog is here to help you heal and resolve. But we don't stay in the shadow. Like a two-hour night, that's what we have here. Yes, we can expose it. But once you expose it, that's where the real work, that's when the healing starts. Ah, oh, now I understand what's at the root cause. Because the doctors don't do this. I mean, I thank God for doctors. They serve their purpose. They're doing their best, highest and best. You know, I mean, hopefully they're waking up these days too, because that's another story. We won't go down that road. I mean, it's controlled manipulation by pharmaceutical drug companies who control no. the school system. All right, good. Everybody in the school knows that. But really, if I say that in a lot of circles, that's a button trigger, right? But the point is, is I mean, it's now it's becoming a joke. Humans know more about health care than the doctors do. It's such a joke. It's, it's embarrassing for the, doc, for the medical institution, as far as I'm concerned. But all right, no judgment. <laughs> get out of the judgment. So, but the point is, once you become aware, now is where the healing begins. So it's not for you, when all this stuff that's exposed, it's not for us to sit there and go, oh, fuck, you know, I'm, I'm hating my life. I'm not enjoying my life. It's for us to say, ah, oh, thank you for this awareness. Thank you. Now, how do I make the change for the better in my life, in that vibrational energy that I'm carrying, in the way I'm thinking, in the way I'm feeling? The first thing is, with every animal in the room, start thanking them. Thank you. I got the message. Because the moment their consciousness is like, she got it. Thank God she got it. <laughs> okay, but the moment they start realizing you got the message, they can start healing too. Because they're holding it in place for you to get the lesson, the learning, the healing. And once you honestly commit, you could do this every one of us tonight. You can look at your animal and look at them in the face or at a picture, even in your mind, just say with your whole heart, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I got it. I really mean it. 
I got I understand. If you don't walk away understanding it, and you can't really honestly say it, that's okay. Then say, I'm going to sit with it some more. That's be real. You see, we can't lie to ourselves. We can't lie to energy. We can't lie to what the animal knows. We can't pretend for a sacred contract it won't be resolved until it's really, really done. So you sit, thank you. I got it, I got it. I might not have it all perfectly figured out. I might not know exactly what to do, but I commit right here and now. I, I got it, and I will do my absolute best to resolve it in the highest and best way I can. Thank you. The animal's consciousness goes, <clears throat> thank you. And what happens when you do that? Relief. 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 That's right. Now the healing really can begin. Because now the animal can say, I can get better now. Because they got it. So they don't go to that doctor. They're, they're sending me to you. It's going to cost me $300 just to talk to them. <laughs> I'm not telling you not to go to a doctor. No, it's but, the dermatologist that they're just sending me to. Yeah, well, okay, so we can go to dermatology too, right? We didn't talk about that. But dermatology, when you're talking about skin, See, the, the biggest challenge with you, start right now that's picking up is I want this to be resonating. I want this to, because your brain's listening, but the processing of the information is what's most important. Really, we can learn something here or we can really get it. And when we get it, that's when the vibration shifts. That's when the experience changes. But the dermatology is another thing. Dermatology skin. So that doctor who told you to go to the dermatologist, it's not that they're wrong, but they're not getting the systemic part of it. This is not about skin. It is. Sorry, I'm being corrected. I will go to skin, but it's deeper. So if you just go to the skin, it won't be healed on the systemic level. What is the systemic level? Internal. It's coming from within. The internal aspect is the candida, the self Reproach, mutilation, deprecation, etc. The anger and the resentment, the difficulty moving forward in life, the difficulty let going. And what's the skin? What is skin? Can anyone intuitively, some of you probably have heard me say, the biggest organ in the body. Well, it is the biggest organ in the body, but what is the skin energetically? It's our interface with the outer world. So if I'm in this body vehicle, and I'm interfacing with an external reality, external to me, which is, by the way, just perceived, right? You understand that? I don't know if you get that, but that's okay. It's just a perceived external reality. My skin is going to be the interface. So if I have a skin issue topically, or my animal does, it means something about the way I'm interacting with my external reality isn't working for me. It's itchy, it's irritating, it's frustrating, it's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> right? So where are you not at peace with your own external reality? And the question isn't ultimately where am I not at peace? The issue is how do I find a way to be in harmony with and at peace with my external reality and aligned within myself so much that I'm, I'm here within myself fine. Everything's fine, good, and well here so that when I interact in the external world, it's okay, it's easy, it's effortless, it's graceful, it's benevolent. Then I don't have to have skin issues. Does this make sense? Yeah. But I can guarantee you, I'm not telling you not to go to a doctor. I would never say that because they do things that I don't do. But most of the time I find that the doctor is not the solution. And in this case, for sure, the doctor is not the ultimate solution. You are. Your transformation. So these are just the things that have been raised to the surface that are now for you to bring healing to. And by the way, I just want to say, as a healer, knowing that you're a healer, yes. healers have it tough. Because we're take, a lot of times we take on the issues of the world, we end up healing them. You know, we have our own programs and belief systems and stuff that we have to clear our own self-sabotage. It's a big one for healers. We're willing to self-sacrifice and self-heal for the good of the world. We want to make the world a better place. And yet, you know, we end up suffering for it. That's not, that's not the highest frequency available either. And we're sensitive. So, you know, we have, we have a hard time with the external world because we're sensitive. And the external world doesn't even operate the way we do. 
So, you know, a lot of times we need to be really understood. I mean, go to Reiki healing circles. Sit in the healing circles. Bring in, you know, come to, I'm going to tell you guys about a healing event I have. I remember. Yeah, yeah but great. We're all healers. We need to sit in the presence of healers. Exactly. Where we're welcomed, where we belong, where we feel comfortable. Because the external world that we're in isn't the most, this old reality is fading away, collapsing. Mm -hmm. But it's not all up to speed yet. So these are the issues that are coming up between you and your dog, and I'm sure there's other layers. I don't mean to oversimplify it, but again, I'll just say this last thing. By bringing it up to the surface, by exposing it, by really getting it, okay, that's when you get to say, okay, now I can do the work. Thank you for demonstrating to me what needed to be resolved. I got it. I promise, I vow to do the inner work now in the highest and best ways I'm able to. You're free to heal. You can also begin to heal with me. Let's heal. Let's heal this. Let's resolve this. Let's drop away what's hanging us down in this lower vibration. And let's level up and birth out of us what this is. All this higher, lighter frequency energy. Because that's in you too. It's just under all those layers. Right. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. I yeah. really appreciate your yeah. helping me. Yeah. All right, so I want to say a little bit about lost animals. Do you want to hear about lost animals, a little bit about lost animals? Or? Yeah. But we have a few more minutes to finish it. <laughs> Does anyone have, besides you guys, do you want to ask something else? I do. <laughs> He's not lost anymore. You found him? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> like, just got it just back. Got it back. After four months. <laughs> yeah, I just have to hear this story. Tell me. What happened? So I got a phone call on Saturday. We were out of town that someone had turned him into furry friends. Oh, I'm so happy. So, I do. I'm sorry. I want to toot my own horn on this one. <laughs> Can I? Yeah. I mean, I knew. I told someone found him and had them, right? Had him, right? No, they, they, it was a family that had gotten some animals from there, and they said their, their, their girls were feeding him. So I'm assuming maybe he was outside. I don't know. Oh, you don't know the whole no, story? I don't know the whole story, no. But I, so my point is, you shifted your vibration, you received the consciousness, you got the gift, you started taking the appropriate actions, you've been doing healing, and your own inner work, and you made a change. You allowed that to happen. Can you see how that happened? Yeah. I tell you the story. I'm still she <laughs> I'm so happy for you. So she had a lost <laughs> animal. So when you came to me, the animal had been lost for a really long time, right? A few months, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many months? Probably at least two and a half to three months. Okay. So basically, the, the intention of the animal when the animal gets lost, sometimes it's because they need to go off and cross over because their human won't let them cross or maybe their human can't handle it if they cross, right? You know, we can't, we're not always, not all humans can handle death or they don't want to make the decision or whatever. But most of the time it's because the human needs some kind of wake-up call, some kind of lesson, so to speak. And in this case, I was so sure that's what it was. She needed, she was being called to a higher lesson to come into her own spiritual consciousness and start looking at her life, how what's working, what's not working. I was again sharing it this way, right? And just to allow a shift to change. And you have been making that shift. And now the animal shows up. Ah, that's amazing. It was kind of like right when she stopped looking almost. Well, you let go. Like, yeah. Well, actually, we were going to get another, we were cat. looking at maybe getting another cat. Oh. And I was supposed to visit, we went and visited this other kitten on Monday. Oh. The day and the phone call came on Saturday. And I was like, yeah. But that's even an energetic, that's an energetic thing too. Because when we're holding on to something, but we've done the work, and then we let go. That's the same example, energetically. You release, you let go. You, you really did. You got the message. You took the appropriate action. The message was wake up, get on your path, get more conscious, slow down, you know, start living with more consciousness, get aligned with divine source, which you did. I t from what I can tell, you made like a, a radical change from the time I met you in terms of I just see you're, at, you're, you're doing my stuff. You know, you're signing up for things, you're coming to events, you're participating in your own conscious evolution, your own expanded consciousness. The cat's job was fulfilled. He made, his mission for being lost in the first place was taken care of. Then you energetically let go. Okay, we got it, we're done. Okay, we did it, so be it. It is what it is. And he was like, okay, I can go back. 
mission accomplished. It took you so long, I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> people don't always realize that with lost animals. I don't really do lost animal cases anymore because a lot of times people, they want to find their cat, but they're not necessarily willing to make the changes appropriate. And when you came to me, that was one of the first questions, even before we took the case with you. We, we do, we screen out those. Because it's like, if you're a lost animal, you ha I have to know that that person is willing to make an appropriate change if it's required. Well, I always ask, you know, is this animal even able to be recovered? And I got that it was. Otherwise, I would never have taken on your case. But anyway, because that's the whole purpose of an animal being lost. There's a higher purpose. Make sense? But you want to know the one way to never lose your animal? So easy. Do you want to know? Yes. <laughs> is it nobody wants to know? I yeah, we, do. Oh. Do we all want to know. That's all right. Quiet. Are you checked? No. No. Don't go with microchip. Well, my dog does. All right, I get that. That's all brainwashing of 3D. You know, that's like, a, I'm a little, all right, I won't share my story on microchip, but I will in this moment. You're going to see it come up as a big issue in the next eight years, or maybe not big, but please refuse to believe that it's healthy for any reason or good for any reason to have your body microchipped. It's not. It, it doesn't matter how brainwashed. They're what they're telling you, how good it is, you never, ever, ever want microchip in the body. Because somebody controls that microchip. And if it's in you, on, off, who knows? We don't know. We don't know what this technology is. We're not being fed the truth. OK, another story. So where was I going? How you never lose your dog you never or cat? The way you never lose them is you say to them, on almost a daily basis, or just whenever you're in love time, we belong together. No matter what goes on, no matter what craziness goes on in my life, no matter what frenzy experiences, no matter how busy I might get, no matter how nervous, no matter if I have money issues and I feel like I don't have enough money to pay for your food, no matter what, we belong together. In this body, in this lifetime, you and I, we're meant to be together. We're soulmates. And I love you and you love me. And we're going to be together. Long and strong, happy and healthy and well. When you say that message to that animal, they're dead. They're not going to get lost. They belong with you. So simple. <laughs> okay. I, I think we're almost up. But I can maybe do one more. You had a question. Yes, I've got a cat with a, a big tumor on her chin. Um, it's the weirdest looking thing. I don't know if it's cancer or not, but the vet suspects that it is. And it's getting bigger and bigger. And she can still eat, and she still acts the same. You know, she's she's got her spirits are up and everything. I just, you know, I'm very frustrated that I've been told there's nothing you can do. You know, is there something? Well, there's I can never do? nothing you can do. Yeah, I know. I want to never hear something. <laughs> Remember this, source. There's nothing that source cannot do. There's nothing that the divine cannot do. By the way, I just got to say, Sarah. Your place is filled with angels. <laughs> There's like angels and orbs and lights everywhere in here. They come hang around this. They're here all the time. I know they are. But it's just so cool because I'm like, you know, I don't keep saying, oh, there's one. There's one. <laughs> They're all over the place. <laughs> cool. Nice place to hang out in. <laughs> Expedito Center. All right. So, so okay. So what's your cat's name? Maylee. Maylee. And your name is? Christine. Okay, I'm gonna tell you what I'm picking up. Sorry. Right. Do you have ancestry back to like the South? I don't think so. Georgia, deep South? I used to live in Georgia. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. So, all right. So, my translation, ancestry, your translation, not ancestry, but you still live there, okay? I, I live there. History. Yeah. So we'll retranslate it more effectively. You see, this is how the translator, mm -hmm. history of somewhere in your past lived in Georgia. <laughs> like, not only was it just the South, I said Georgia. Got the Georgia. Yeah, All right, thank right. you. So, <laughs> Maylie's tumor is connected to your belief systems related to the South. This is not just this lifetime that's lighting up. In other words, the words are prim and proper. I'm going to translate this better. Stay with me. It's where you think and believe there's a certain way 
you're supposed to speak, a certain way you're supposed to express yourself. Hold on, let me just pause a little bit. I know I'm on the right track, I just want to get a, get a little. And it's based on the way, the way you were raised. So it's through your lineage too. It's like, okay, uh, they're saying I can go on. So it's like a little bit of a resentment because You're trying to express clearly and express in the right way and say it clearly and accurately, but it's not getting through. This is the energetic. Trying to be polite, wanting to be polite, and all those things that the South represents. You know what the South represents? It's like Southern charm, Southern character. You're, in a way, it's not resonating for you, but this is unconscious stuff coming up. Because I'm not really from the South. I was born in Pittsburgh. <laughs> it doesn't matter. This is a problem for me. When I, whenever I try to give you something that's too far out for you to okay. resonate with, so I'll bring it down. I'll bring it down. Your husband, who's your, what's your husband's name? Abe. Abe. Where did Abe Lincoln come from? Uh, the South. <laughs> I'm, I'm not wrong in my, my, my reading. You have a connection through your ancestry from the South, and there's an old way of the way you're supposed to behave, like a Southern belle, and that is just not driving with who you are. But okay, that's a little too out there for you. So let's just bring it down to a little more down to earth. What's cancer? What do we talk about? What's cancer? Anger. 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 What's the mouth? Communication. Communication and expression. What chakra is this? Throat and mouth chakra. What does the chakra center represent? Authentic expression. So what is cancer energetically? Vibrationally. Our animals picking everything up from us. They're neutral. They're pure love, source incarnate to help us heal, to teach us. Cancer. I'm angry about the expression or the lack of authenticity in the expression. Does that make sense so far? You're not conscious of it. No, I guess not. You mean in, in general, just about everything? Or any or a particular subject? No, I'm digging deeper. Hold on. I mean, I know it's linked to other lifetimes. That's why I keep, they keep bringing me that back there. But that's not where I'm wanting to go because I need to translate this more effectively. Maylee. She's so sweet and innocent. So sweet. I know. Sweet is. She's so sweet and innocent. She wants to please everybody. She's a sweetie. She wants to make everybody happy. Right? Right. She's, yes. she's a good cat. Right. This sweet innocence. Sometimes it's not your truth. In other words, you're sweet. Can you tell me your name again? Christine. Christine. Right. So, so your cat is just so sweet and innocent. And she, we can tell she's doing a healing for you. We know that, right? You're with me on that one? I don't know. <laughs> Not really. I don't, I don't know what she's trying to tell me. Okay, I'll just okay. translate it straight and then okay. you can okay. figure it out. Because ultimately, this is the whole night. Do you understand the concept of the night, what we've been talking about? Sure. That everything's energy. Absolutely. And that our animals feel the energy Got that's in our, in our home with them. That they're experiencing that and then they take it on like sponges is an effort to heal us. So it. therefore, their illness... It does resonate for them from other lifetime, other but well, we didn't talk about other lifetimes or parallels. So let's just say this lifetime only. We'll just deal with this lifetime. Forget the other lifetimes, even though that that part was coming up for you. She's feeling what's going on in the house, and we know you you have validated that much that Maylee is a sweet, innocent cat who likes to please. She's so sweet. She's so innocent. That's her demeanor. She gave me that too. Right. So. Why could it, how could a sweet, innocent cat have a tumor of cancer on her chin? Yeah. <laughs> Let me figure that one out. Okay. Let me 
says. <laughs> I'm getting a joy. I love a lot of love from the source. Help me. Thank you. In the reality that we live in, do we understand in our reality we are victims of cancer? Can we agree to that? Sure. The reality that we live in, we're victims. You get cancer, it's not your fault. Your cat gets cancer, it's not your fault. You're a victim, right? I hope it's not my fault. <laughs> it's not. I mean, it's not your fault. In the reality we live in, we get a disease. Someone gets a disease and you didn't cause it, right? You didn't Hopefully cause not. it. Yeah. Might have been the canned food. I don't know. Are the shots? Right. What? It's something <laughs> outside of you. That's right. It's in the reality we live in. In the reality we live in, we didn't cause it. The shots caused it or the food caused it, but therefore we're a victim. Does this make sense? Yeah. We're victims. Okay, so exactly. Maylee then is a victim of the cancer, right? I see it that way. Yes. Mm -hmm. At the fundamental core level, you need to heal your victim. What is the job of the victim? Suffer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the job of the victim is to become victorious. So I just went a little too far out there for you, but everything else I still stand behind it 100%. I'm so sure that everything that came through, but I realize that, that that I have to start where you're at. The first level of healing the cancer is healing the victim. We all have a, a major victim in us. There's no one on planet Earth who hasn't had to deal with our own victim, inner victim. Right? That's what goes on on Earth. We're victims. We are a victim of disease. We didn't create it or cause it. We're just victims of it. That's what the word victim means. It happened to us. Something outside of us did it to us. Does this make sense? Yeah. So if we have a belief system that we've been victimized, we're a victim, then sometimes what the cancer there is to help us heal the part of us that feels like a victim. Feels like we were victimized by it. And the job of the victim, because the victim is never to blame. Victim is never to blame. It's a victim. We're victims. Victim's not to blame. You're not to blame. But somehow, out of this, the victim has opportunity to become victorious. <coughs> Does that make some sense? And how? <laughs> That's the question. How do you do it? <laughs> that is right. That is the question. How does you how do you become victorious when you've been victimized? So that is what this cat, this sweet innocent cat, is asking you to resolve. So somewhere in your experience, either this lifetime or another, I would say both, you've been victimized as a woman who's a sweet, kind, caring woman. And that purity and innocence wants to discover herself as victorious. So part of the question for you to be asking, Christine, is because I get that you're a very strong woman. You're not foolish or, you know. I get that you're a very strong woman. The issue is, though, how do I heal and resolve that part of me that feels victimized and is angry about it? That feminine aspect of me that has been either abused or molested even, or some form of that kind of victimization on women. Does that make sense on some level? No, not really. That never happened to me. I've been lucky. Okay, well, it's not. It's, the molestation maybe, maybe is too strong of a word. Maybe it's neglect. Neglect, thank you. That's the word. Okay. 
Good. You know your truth better than I do. I know. I yeah, I'll go along with neglect. Okay, <laughs> and okay, there. That's your key. So when you've been neglected, that neglect, how did it make you feel? Victimized. Yeah. You're right. Yep. So that victimization, the wrongness of being neglected, that neglect has created some form of anger and resentment for you. Is that right? Right. That's what needs to be resolved. Okay. And as you resolve that, you will discover yourself victorious. Okay. And the way you're going to do that is through forgiveness. Forgiveness is the cure, ultimate cure to cancer. It cures almost everything, but for cancer, it's the most important cure, is forgiveness. It's not fighting cancer. That's ridiculous, that's like ridiculous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so how are you gonna forgive yourself for allowing yourself to be neglected? Because if you blame the person who victimized you, who neglected you, the person or people that puts you in the victim state again. It's their fault. They wronged me. Now I'm in blame and judgment. And you stay victimized and stay angry. Because somehow you allowed it and tolerated it. And through that, you, you did that for a higher purpose, to discover yourself victorious, to heal and resolve the anger and the resentment being neglected. Now, the times that you were neglected, during those times, was there parts of you, and you don't necessarily have to tell me, because I know we're about to start wrapping up, but that you wish you would have said something or tried to say the right thing and didn't say the right thing, suppressed your truth, held back angry words maybe, or resented that you couldn't say the truth, or maybe felt like you should say this, but you'd rather say that. Something along those lines. Is that making sense? Yeah. Yes. That is the energy of cancer in the throat. So that's why this sweet, innocent cat, and that's why she's doing so well, because in truth, she knows she's loved, and she knows she's a beautiful being, and she knows you love her. So she's still doing well. She is. It's amazing. Yes. <laughs> So as, like you love, <laughs> as you love and forgive and release that part of you that feels like you were victimized. Now, how do we release the victim? We search for what was good. What was good and right about that situation? Now, in the moment, we heard nothing. That person neglected me or that people or that I was neglected. I, I was denied my needs. But there was something good something good, more than one thing, that is going to somehow bring you into a state of victory. When you find and discover that good thing, whatever those good things are, the gifts, that's where the healing will take place. You'll discover yourself victorious. And that's ultimately what the, what the healing is about. Does this make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, I hope this is helpful for you guys, yeah? Thank you so much. All right, before you go, thank you. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. I'm going to tell you a couple of things, okay, because we're going to wrap. First, I want to thank you all for being here, showing up. You guys are the only ones who didn't ask anything. Well, maybe not. The middle row. You didn't either. We've right. had so many answers. Oh. That, okay. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm sorry. I try to get to everybody, but I know. Well, yeah. one here. I realize, yeah, there's one. Okay. But anyway, so, all right. So, because maybe afterwards or some other time. But, all right. So, I want to tell you, there's some CDs. These ones are the ones you like the most. If you want to learn animal communication and telepathy, this is a double CD. So, it's literally the steps to learning animal communication and telepathy. And this is learning about animals in the afterlife, the sacred contracts, sacred agreements, what happens, the crossing, how to work with them, how to connect with them. So you might be interested in those. They're normally, because they're double CDs, they're normally 40. But for in-person events, I do 30, because they're double. And these are just, uh, this is the Universal Laws. It's a single CD. It's normally 20, but it's 10 here. And then this is about manifesting, manifestation. It's a double CD. It's normally 40 but for here it's 30. So if you're interested, they're at the front desk. 
Now, I just want to show you real quick some flyers. I should have had these up. Okay. So every third, well, not every, this is the last one, the third Friday of the month, I do a gifted event for South Florida community. And it's at Unity Church in the Gardens. It's gifted. And we do, I know some, several of you have been there. And we do really powerful, profound energy healing. It takes a whole hour, you know, meditation, but it's so effective. If we include our animals and our children, please come, take the flyer that looks like this, and join us. It's gifted. I mean, you just have to show up for the energy healing. And then we do work with the collective, because we understand energetically we can heal and assist humanity. Anyway, that's that flyer. Okay, this is the sacred membership. So if anyone wants to go deeper and do more, really, if you want to learn about the whole kit and caboodle, this is like a year-long membership that has hundred over a hundred hours of content. Ebooks, all my ebooks are in there. There's energy healing, there's DNA activations, there's all kinds of spiritual stuff. Classes on animal communication and telepathy. So much content. Anyway, that's that. And there's a coupon code on there if you want that to save 100 bucks. Then this is just a list of all my classes and workshops. I do them all mostly by online if you want to know more. And this is free gifts. If you put your email address down, you will get free gifts from tonight, which are three simple steps to effective energy healing with people and animals. You'll love it. Seven surefire steps to making a heart-centered energy connection with your animals. And 11 ways to have a more magnificent relationship with your animals. They're e-books and classes. They're really great content. I mean, I, I should be charging. I could charge, make a whole living just on that stuff. But anyway, it's, I give it away free for people to come to my events. And then finally, this event is actually full, but I just got another house, which I know you guys are coming, right? We're going on a sacred journey to Arkansas to dig with, for the crystals in the crystal mines. And uh, if you love crystals and if you want to connect with your more intensive DNA and learn about grid work and crystals, and there's so many amazing crystals in here. Okay, those are the flyers. Other than that, I just want to say thank you guys. Thank you, Sarah.